So welcome, dear listeners. Welcome to this InnovX podcast about innovative solutions in the financial sector. My name is Martin Golecker. I'm the product manager at Capito. Capito is an Austrian social business that is concerned with tax simplification. We have developed an AI solution called Capito AI that enables any corporations, but also, of course, um, corp companies in the financial sector to simplify complex information and make it more accessible for people with learning difficulties, language learners, and so on. Um, I myself um, have a background in management um, and economics, and I have several years of working experience at different software companies as a product owner, product manager. Yeah, and I'm happy to um, discuss the topic of innovative solutions in the financial sectors today um, with Steliano Malalo. Maybe you can also briefly introduce yourself and talk about your background mm -hmm. and expertise. Sure, thank you. Thank you, Martin. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, it's really great uh, to, uh, to be joining you today and to be able to share with you, Martin. Uh, ideas and exchange experiences about uh, some topics we have in common, as, as uh, you just briefly mentioned uh, the description about yourself. Um, I'm, a, I'm Chief Operating Officer for OTP Lease in Romania, a part of the banking group called OTP. Um, from this capacity, my role is to uh, manage our entire back office area, meaning uh, IT and digital, uh, strategic projects, marketing, um, logistics, quality control. Um, besides my daily job, I'm also involved in the um, in a local uh, NGO that's called Unihab. Unihab. It's um, it's a dedicated NGO for students that want to become entrepreneurs. I think it's very important to. Uh, support the next generation of young people who would like to make a contribution. Um, and also, I'm a board member at Global Women Tech Leaders. It's an NGO dedicated to uh, promoting women in STEM. And it's also uh, nice. a very close, <laughs> exact, it's a very, very important cause for me. It's very close to my heart um, because not, not only I believe in the importance of bringing more women <laughs> in our companies, but also I, I do believe in the, the power of diversity. Um, and I think uh, when we are talking and we, when we are going to discuss about uh, the topic we have today, I would say that diversity, it's very close related to innovation. <laughs> yeah, so, so this is me in a nutshell. Um, I've been working in the financial sector for the past years, but before that I've been involved in, actually I have like, I, I've had like several hats on my head, let's call it like that, because I have worked for NGOs as well, companies, uh, government, in different areas and with uh, different skills to, to bring on the table. Um, the red thread though for me as a professional was the, the fact that I love to uh, start new things and, and to give them life and shape. <laughs> yeah, uh, sounds like and, it. And, Exactly, and and see exact, and then you know um, uh, make this contribution to the community. This is very close to to my heart. Yeah, yeah, very interesting stuff. I think it's great that you're so engaged um, in and outside of your company. Very nice, um, and yeah, I also think it's very interesting that um, we. have I think the two of us, we kind of bring different views on this topic on the table. You working in a, um, in the banking industry, in the financial industry. Um, we from Capito, we have um, several um, clients in the financial sector who are using our AI products for tax simplification and for accessibility. Um, and also we are part of several um, large scale research projects. Um, where we are working on accessibility solutions, accessible information technologies, and there are also uh, insurance companies, banking companies involved. So I think it's kind of like two um, different views on the same topic. You coming more from the inside, I come from the aus outside as more of a vendor. Um, but maybe we, we, we start by looking at the big picture. Um, what do you think um, working in the in the banking industry, working also in such a high position, what are the most pressing 
topics regarding innovation in your company and also um, for your competitors, partners in the financial industry? What are the, the big things, the pressing topics that need to be tackled and also the, the opportunities that, that are arising right now? Um, <clears throat> thank, thank you for this question. It's actually very straightforward because it's uh, one of the questions we have as as uh, professional professionally in the field. And um, I would just make like a brief introduction because in the last years uh, we've noticed, at least in the financial sector, uh, a very quick shift in our way of doing things. Um, banking sector is, a is, and it was, a very traditional sector. We are heavily regula uh, regulated. Um, we have several KPIs that we need to uh, be able uh, to uh, perform. Um, so we had this framework where we had a lot of limitations. Nevertheless, in the last years, what we've noticed is that um, our competitors are not anymore only the banks. Um, we see competitors, fintechs, for example, from time to time. Uh, we see competitors in other software companies. So basically, first of all, our um, competition, it's very diverse right now. We cannot just look at the, uh, the other banks as competitors, first of all. Yeah. Second of all, uh, we noticed a change in the way the, the consumers are expecting us, their financial partner, to act. Uh, what I mean by that is that we've noticed that their um, behavior and biases related to the banking are, are shifting a little bit. Um, and it's important for us to notice that our consumers and our clients, they expect from us a, a similar experience in terms of usage, in terms of um, responses, in terms of delivery of the services as similar as other um, companies that are working in the digital field, let's call it like that. Uh, so I think it's important to, to look, first of all, at this framework we are operating in. Uh, also, we've noticed in the last, um, I would say, decade, at least in Romania, uh, we've witnessed a significant shift from the physical branches, especially on the banking side, to the online platforms and mobile applications. Um, this shift has greatly enhanced the customer experience uh, by providing 24 hours, seven days per week, uh, access to the, to the services we provide, um, reduced the, the need to have in-person uh, visits to the bank or to the branch, and also increased the need for personalized services. So, I, I think it's important to, to, to look at this, this change. Yes, yeah. Um, now, nowadays, when we are talking about the, uh, the challenges, I see, I see here two, two approaches that are, from my point of view, are, are intertwined. The first, one, the first one is the fact that when we are looking at challenges, we usually talk about technology. But in my view, even if we have the best technology in the world, if we bring it and put it on something that is uh, in a, on a system inside our company that is um, not functional or our teams are not prepared for the future or we have issues on the processes, the technology is not going to solve our problems. On the contrary, uh, it's just going to enhance them. So my yeah. first, <laughs> my first uh, response here on the challenges is actually not about the technology, but it's, okay, how us as teams and managers and leaders are going to prepare our companies and teams for the change. Because actually one of the, the greatest challenge I see is how we are working with our teams to integrate the technology and to remove the, the resistance to change and the resistance to uh, make shift in the way we are working. So this mm -hmm. I would put it as a first challenge from my point of view. And the second challenge is, of course, related to the way technology um, and actually key technological innovations. And I would say here blockchain, uh, AI, of course, machine learning, disruptors in the market. 
uh, how they are uh, going to um, help us actually to transform the banking sector. That's, yeah. for example, I don't know, blockchain technology is already being used from in, in certain areas to secure transaction or to reduce fraud, but not all the banks are using it. Um, AI and machine learning, on the other hand, as well, they are improving the way we are uh, doing our work. They uh, make us more efficient, but in, on the other hand, um, they are, you know, uh, bringing a lot of pressure on our teams to to be able to deal with this. Another challenge, I think, it's um, the way we are um, looking at the open banking concept in the sense that when we are discussing about open banking, it, it this is another significant development currently. And I think it's going to help us, uh, you know, foster a more competitive and more innovative banking environment. Uh, nevertheless, uh, it's uh, it's going to be interesting to see exactly how traditional banks and financial companies are going to adopt this and integrate in the in the in the way they are doing um, mm -hmm. businesses. And last but not least, I left this uh, the last one, but I think it's one of the most important one as well is cybersecurity. As our services are going online, let's call it simplify like this. Um, I think the importance of a robust cybersecurity strategy and measures needs to be, you know, a, a top priority for us. Uh, why? Because we need to protect the customer data. We need to maintain the trust uh, in in the business. And I think we we are going to uh, to need to be even more invested in uh, bringing security technologies and provide this um, to provide a safeguard against you know cyber threats. I just read yep. the news this mm -hmm. morning and with this I'm closing. I just read the news this morning that company in the UK uh, was frauded with I think 25 million euros or something like this because somebody deep faked their CFO and some of the employees. Uh, so yeah, this is why I would say cybersecurity is one of the challenges yeah. we need to we need to tackle. So in a nutshell, uh, first of all, uh, it's important to look at the people and the change management and how we are going to do this. And mm -hmm. second of all, is the it's technology with uh, its different benefits, but also potential threats that we need to 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 bring on the table. And cybersecurity is one of them. Nevertheless, we are looking at the advantages coming from AI, yeah. machine learning, blockchain, and, you know, platforms, or, you know, even, even companies like yourself, and I underline this, um, because I said at the beginning uh, that, you know, a decade ago, let's say maybe fintechs or neobanks were more of a threat, let's call it like this, mm -hmm. but what I noticed, and I think what's more important these days is to partnership with uh, this type of companies, um, because uh, what I've noticed when we are partnering with fintechs or with companies that provide innovative solutions like Capito, uh, we are actually able as a financial industry to move the needle a bit faster and to tap into the potential actually we can bring together and not mm -hmm. separate. Yeah, I also think uh, collaboration is, is, is key. I think the first point that you mentioned is that there's already this digitization of products and services. This is this is kind of like a pull from the market. You need to 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 have these digital services in place, otherwise um, you cannot compete anymore. And you you um, emphasized here uh, the need for this cultural change, um, creating a, an organizational culture where people can um, work on digital products can work fast, can work agile. And I I totally see your point. I, I guess it's also uh, quite a big challenge um, getting the expertise in-house, finding mm -hmm. also um, new employees with digital competences or um, training existing employees with, uh, with digital uh, competences. Um, and yeah, I fully agree with you here that, that collaboration is very important because it also helps these more traditional firms to move faster into these new topics. For example, we we are a social business, but also a software business by heart. 
with a smaller, uh, more dedicated teams towards um, our AI solution. And of course, this can help you get faster uh, to these new ideas, new products, new features um, in your company. I think you also mentioned by the end the topic of cybersecurity, and this is also, I, I totally get this point. This is also something that's always mentioned and always asked um, in discussions with our clients and so on. And here I wanted to ask you, um, um, because you mentioned the topic of regulations in the beginning, um, something that you need to deal with. Are these regulations um, helpful for you as, as in the banking industry or are they more uh, obstacle for new innovations? For example, when looking at the topic of cybersecurity um, and privacy, we had the GDPR, um, for example, the introduction of the GDPR and, and multiple more uh, legislations and so on, on an EU level and local level. Are these regulations helpful for you as a as a banking company or more of an obstacle in innovating your products and services? Uh, that's that's <laughs> such a great question. And I was sharing with you before our discussion that actually I'm coming back from Vienna. You, you are based in Vienna and I just came back from Vienna the other day um, from a conference that tackled um, uh, challenges and projects in, in, in banking. And Actually, what uh, this question was uh, one of the most uh, let's uh, let's call it the interesting one in 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 the top, in the in the conference because um, each party had a different view actually <laughs> as yes. you know each participant or you know um, there was a the conference was international so uh, each participant uh, gave an answer also based on the local regulation not only on the international ones. Um, but I'll share with you what I've uh, contributed uh, uh, in the conference as well. Um, so in the banking sector, regulation, let's say, they are part of who we are. And it's hard for me to believe that in the near future, at least, they are going to disappear or, or they are going to be heavily limited. On the contrary, if I may, <laughs> if I may say, there are new uh regulation coming in and it's going to be uh quite a challenge to to figure out how to step up and put them in place especially for the smaller banking uh, groups mm -hmm. um nevertheless i would my perspective is a bit different when i talk about regulations i think okay why they are important and why we need them and this is a question each of us can answer because each of the banking groups or financial companies it's different and, you know, they can provide their own answer. And second of all is to look at these regulations as a way of providing trust. Uh, at the end of the day, a bank or a financial institution, actually the currency we have is not money. It's actually trust. Uh, this is my, my, my own mm -hmm. perspective. Uh, so I think our currency is actually trust. And the regulation help us provide this trust for the clients, for the partners, for, you know, a company like yourself yeah. we are working with to, to provide trust. What I think it's important here, and I, I think it's a, a, the name, it's also called, uh, it's called reg tech, regulatory technology. We also have some help from this side because um, with regulatory technology, so we have regulation, but we also started to notice regulatory technology. So basically this technology that it's helping us financial institutions to comply with the regulations more efficiently. And for example, we can now automate compliance processes using data analytics that monitor a transaction in real time, for example, uh, or um, other uh, regulatory technology can help us re reduce the burden of regulatory compliance uh, through other integrations with other platforms. Uh, or they can help us increase the operational efficiency. So from my point of view, I think the regulations are, if they are uh, correctly put in practice, and if we are using the right technology, I think they can be a help actually for us in, in these mm -hmm. terms, not only a, a burden. 
Also, I would like to say that, for example, and we've been discussing about GDPR a lot the, <laughs> the other days, uh, because yes, GDPR has, uh, has been a very challenging uh, regulation for all of us, not only financial sector, but for all the companies. Nevertheless, what I'd like to mention here is to take the good out of the <laughs> GDPR uh, regulation. And I would emphasize the fact that it made us more aware, and I'm not talking made us like only the banks or the private sector, more aware of the fact that we need to use the data in an ethical way. But also us as users, individual users, um, at the end of the day, um, I think these regulations can act also like an educational forum, if I can call it like that, in the sense that, you know, uh, and I just gave you the example with the deep fake uh, news I read. At the end of the day, um, if we get more acquainted with the regulation and why they are in our lives, um, if we understand technology, uh, if we understand the risk that they uh, we are exposed to i think we can give a more let's say a more um, positive perspective to regulations yeah. nevertheless and you said a, a great thing earlier uh, is that we need people that are prepared to understand technology or you know mm. to use that technology and i would use that in the topic of re uh, regulatory elements as well, because I think it's so important that the, the person who are doing the regulatory frameworks uh, to be able to understand technology. And I would also emphasize what I said earlier, this partnership. And I think if um, the, the regulatory institution, if they are going to work closely with companies like technology companies, uh, I think they will be able to bring this framework of regulation that's more adapted to the, you know, the current environment and to the current need of the companies and the population again. I would also emphasize that whenever we talk about regulation, we always think about it in a negative way because yes, unfortunately, they come as limitation. <laughs> and some of them, they, um, they tend not to be adap adapted or adopted in the current environment. Um, I, I would say that it's, it's really important to uh, bring the, the educational part into this discussion of regulation and to make sure that whenever we, we bring a new framework, a new law, a new, uh, I don't know, uh, a framework of uh, working, I think both the parties, so the, the legislator and the banking financial company, they need to be able to also educate themselves and to understand digital project and to understand how to put that uh, in the benefit of the consumer at the end of the day. And I think maybe here there is room for improvement on this educational mm -hmm. and, the, and the positive perspective of the reglementation. Yeah, I really enjoy your positive spin on, on this whole regulation topic and you men mentioned so many um, valid and, and, and good points. Um, for example, that regulations can really educate people also um, foster discussions for example i think you you mentioned it in um regarding the gdpr um the introduction of these um this legislation open discussion about privacy it i think not only in the business sector but but everybody was started talking about um, privacy. I think even families had discussions, talking with yeah. their children and so on. So I think it really helps uh, create discussion and create a platform um, for people to talk about very important topic topics. And um, we 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 see this um, um, here at Capito. Um, for example, the EU Accessibility Act that will uh, be uh, translated into national um, um, legislations right now. For example, it asks um, financial industries to uh, provide information um, in simplified language, or maybe you notice several levels from language learning, A1 to C2, um, at least the, the, the information shouldn't be on the C level. Um, mm -hmm. And our clients in the financial industry, they really ask us for help because they, they don't know how they can um, achieve this, how they can make sure that they have simplified language. Um, and they're opening up these products and getting into discussions with, with us and with um, other experts. Um, 
and if there wouldn't be this kind of legislation, um, I think they they wouldn't even have thought about making their language more accessible for people with learning difficulties, for language learners, um, people who just moved into a, con a country. There are so, so many applications, for example, for simplified language, but without mm -hmm. the legislation, at least that's my feeling from discussion with clients, many businesses wouldn't even have talked about this. So I think this is a very, very, very interesting um, point that you stressed here. And I think you also mentioned a few a few words about about educating um, businesses, but also adding educating the, the, the broad population about the regulations, about the legislations, maybe also about the underlying topics like accessibility or or privacy. Those are just the, the two we mentioned. Um, what do you think in general about this topic of educating people, improving the financial literacy, giving financial education and so on? And how does this also um, affect you as a, as a financial um, company? And also maybe I will later talk about how, how this could affect us as a vendor um, here. From my point of view, I think technology it's making is making financial education more accessible and engaging. Um, you mentioned the, uh, the accessibility part, um, and I think it's uh, it's correct that nowadays technology and there, I, I've seen uh, numerous apps or courses or interactive platforms um, that are specifically designed to teach financial concepts in a user-friendly uh, manner or um, they provide the help as you, as you mentioned for um, those uh, customers or potential customers that uh, need to understand the complex financial topics in a more uh, you know, understandable and I would say enjoyable <laughs> way <laughs> at the end of the day, um, because financial services are part of our lives. Uh, and I think we all have a, we have a, at least one bank account. Uh, we need some financial services. We need financial support one and another to um, move on with our dreams and hopes and aspirations. Um, so first of all, I would uh, emphasize what you said that technology and um, companies uh, that are working with the banks can help uh, us to make our financial products and financial language at the end of the day more accessible and more user friendly. You know, let's call it let's call it like this. And I think we need to do that because um, I, I'm not familiar a lot with with the uh, with the European market, but on the local market at least, we've noticed that. Uh, there, there is a high percentage of people that are not uh, connected, let's call it like this, to the financial world, and they don't understand certain things, uh, or it's difficult for them to access certain financial services so that they are not able to tap into the full potential of their uh, company or you know their um, lives and so on. Um, so for me, it's really great to see this common effort to bring education in the financial sector in this in this way. Um, it's so important to have this collaborative effort because at the end of the day, and this is something I, I said at the beginning that I'm very uh, I'm a big fan of diversity. And I, I think it's so important to have diversity when we are talking about education in the financial world. And this diversity comes from this collaborative efforts you, you mentioned as well. Because from my point of view, improving financial literacy requires um, a joint venture, <laughs> joint venture mm -hmm. between yeah. financial institutions like, you know, the one I represent, uh, but also, I don't know, governments, uh, other companies, uh, fintechs, um, NGOs. The education so, sector also. Exactly, um, exactly. Education sector. Mm. Um, so I wouldn't say um, we should do this not on our, only our, on ourselves. And because we have, uh, you know, a straight perspective and mm. 
you know, as you mentioned, my perspective is one because I'm an insider in an organization, in a financial organization, and it's only normal, you know, for me to have a, a certain perspective. But you, Martin, that that you work in a, in a different company and you provide, you know, other types of services and other yeah. types, you, you have another type of uh, approach. You can come and work with me and give me your perspective, you know, and bringing together my perspective with your perspective. It's the better way to move forward in the educational field uh, because in this way, we don't leave behind any other people. You know, I think it's yeah. in, the, in the States, it's this concept of no kid left behind in the educational system. Um, so I think when we are talking about financial education, this collaborative efforts and joint <laughs> ventures yeah. Uh, between our companies or governments or schools or community um, professionals, they are, from my point of view, should be the basis of what we do. It, yeah. Because in this way, we have the holistic approach, not only, you know, a certain part. Um, mm -hmm. Really bringing multiple perspectives together. Yeah. Exactly. Really exactly. Agree. And I think this is going to bring, I mean, I, I emphasize this and I'm really happy you are on, uh, you know, um, you are on the same page with me. I think this kind of initiatives, uh, companies uh, that provide this kind of help to the financial institution, together, I think uh, I think we can provide individuals and our clients uh, with the knowledge and the skills they need to make informed financial decisions. You mm -hmm. know, because at the end of the day, I think it's more it's very important nowadays to um, as individuals to have a financial stability and to have financial inclusion. I mean, um, and um, we can only achieve this if we want people understand what's, uh, what's uh, financial education and why it's important. And then uh, to tap into those individuals that aren't so connected. Yeah. Because um, I don't know about you, but for example, Last year we had a project. Uh, it's called Fearless Girls. It's a uh, it's a project dedicated to girls between 10 and 16 years old in Romania uh, that are living in other rural areas or very small cities. Uh, so we made we made this project. It's a it's a more complex project, but we also had the financial uh, education uh, subject in 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 the project. And what I've learned firsthand is that I live in a bubble. And don't don't get me wrong, I come from a very small city. Now I live in Bucharest mm -hmm. and I've been living here for, for quite some time, but I came from a small city as well. Nevertheless, because I had the chance to um, to move to Bucharest, to learn, to grow, and you know, to be in a certain kind of environment, it kind of disconnected me uh, from what's actually happening in a, in a very big part of Romania. And the what I've learned from that project is that we as financial institutions, we need to work even more and even better and to partnership with that. We worked with an NGO for this uh, project and we need to partner to have this kind of partnership to bring financial literacy into those yeah. who are unconnected, because otherwise we are living in a bubble. Uh, and uh, that bubble might be very small. <laughs> Yeah, uh, sounds like a very, very, very interesting and very nice project. Um, sounds really great that you're helping um, young girls um, get, getting more um, financial literacy. And yeah, I fully agree. Um, having a collaborative effort to to push financial literacy um, is crucial because it just helps make these services and products more accessible. It also um, enables people um, to grow their wealth, um, 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 make their lives better, um, make good and sound financial decisions. Uh, we here from Capito, we also always advocate for um, educating, but also uh, simplifying, um, also, also um, trying to make um, information very digestible. Um, and it's all, I mean, both have the same kind of like end goals, um, making financial products and services accessible and helping people to make their own decisions. 
Sometimes they're mm -hmm. good, sometimes they are bad, but if they get this knowledge and if they can understand the information, um, more likely than not, they can make better decisions, good decisions, and um, yeah, have a better financial um, um, foundation in their life. Um, and yeah, this is this to me. This is a more a personal take. Um, I would really, really appreciate if the the innovative solutions in the financial sector. Um, benefit everybody, create more diversity, accessibility or and and therefore help everybody um, and maybe it is also a good point to 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 come to our our, our closing remark remarks i think we we tackle quite quite a lot of different topics from um the general um, technologies that are arising and that putting um the need for innovation um, in the banking industry to regulations to to education and literacy but maybe what are your what are your final remarks? What is um, regarding innovative solutions in the financial sector? Um, what's what are the most important aspects for you? Mm -hmm. Well, if I uh, if I need to draw a conclusion, I would say that we are living interesting times, and actually, <laughs> I <laughs> this can be a curse or you know a, a benefit. <laughs> we will see which one is uh, the correct thing. Um, in what concerns the financial, uh, the financial world, um, what I've noticed is that definitely um, we as companies and we as professionals working in the field, uh, we need to understand that, you know, running the old playbook, if I can call it like this, will not allow us to, to thrive. Uh, and not only to try, but also maybe to survive in the future. So from my point of view, I think it's very important to have a look at these two perspectives. So how we are going to operate, how is going to be uh, our operating models? Do we need to work more as tech companies or software companies? And how do we need to invest in our people for them to be prepared for uh, this new operating model? Uh, also, I would like to emphasize the fact that I think we are going to move into a more uh, in a digital first uh, business model, and um, we we are going to integrate even more this this type of partnership work we've mentioned before. You know, uh, to have uh, partners coming from different areas that are going to help us to to remain relevant for the entire population, not only for the for the core customers, let's call it like this. Um, I think we are going to need to um, identify how we can um, provide end-to-end -end journeys for our clients uh, and how we can work with them to provide personalized um, services for them. Last but not least, um, I think we are going to be even more challenged to uh, you know to to change our mindset and to understand that as people we are not going to need only the let's call it the hard skills of financial world you know to be an accountant to be you know a salesperson in financial and so on but we also we are going to need to have digital skills and i think this is something you also mentioned and it's something that i truly believe in that each of us, no matter the area in, in which we work as financial professional, we need to understand technology, we need to, to have a bit more complex digital skills, and we need to know and to, to, to be able to adapt on the new technology that is coming uh, in our uh, operating model. Um, so this is why, uh, as I said, we are living mm -hmm. interesting times. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and but I'm excited for the future uh, in the sense that, you know, um, as, as you said earlier, I, I like to put a positive spin on on, uh, on things. And I think it's important to maintain a growth mindset and to maintain a mindset that it's focused on the things we can control, on the things we can improve and the things we can actually um, contribute to, to a better society. And I think it's so important, and it's not only related to the financial world per se, but I think it's important for us as professionals 
to leave a better world for the you know the generations that are coming behind us. We are not going to be here forever. So uh, I would I would say that it's our duty and responsibility um, to think in a in a way that leaves behind a world that's a bit better than the one we <laughs> took over. Uh, and I think we can we can do this by um, partnerships, uh, by uh, using technology for the better good, um, and being open to learning and, and and growth. These are not exactly financial things, but I think that's very important for each of us mm -hmm. uh, to have in in our minds and to act ba based on them. Mm -hmm. And it was a very, very nice conclusion, really nicely summing up all the topics we discussed. The only thing I wanted I want to add here is is also uh, a word that we mentioned quite a lot and and I think it's 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 collaboration. Really mm -hmm. uh, collaborating um, like the businesses um, with clients, with vendors, with regulators to create um, innovative um, digital solutions that are accessible, that are helpful, that have a great user experience, also to um, collaboratively create those regulations that foster trust, that um, not hinder innovation, but rather um, enable it, and also collaborate um, to really um, also improve the financial literacy to help people um, make better decisions and 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 have yeah make sound financial financial decisions. So I think this was a really nice discussion on this topic. Um, I think it was uh, also very nice um, that we tackled some topic that are more concerned with our endeavors outside of the of the business field um, here regarding diversity and and accessibility and. I want to to thank you, Steliana, for um, all your inputs, ideas, remarks, um, and yeah, I want to say goodbye to all the listeners who tuned in today. Uh, thanks for being here. Thanks for listening to our discussion, and yeah, looking forward to the next one. Thank you, Martin. It was so so great to talk with you, and thank you for uh, you know uh, ch uh, challenging me a little bit. <laughs> Uh, that, because that's always great to, to get outside of our, of our comfort zone. So thank you for that. Cool. Thank you to our listeners. And I'm just so looking forward to learn and uh, see exactly where your company Capito is going on and why not, uh, you know, to intersect in Romania as well. Yeah, we should definitely get, uh, continue our discussion regarding this. So bye, everybody. Bye, Steliana. Thanks. Bye.